Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SewSpire.com and today I am here to show you how to sew this cargo pocket pixie panel which you can use to create a one-of-a-kind patchwork pixie purse for yourself. A couple of variations on this design. First, the patchwork styling. Second, I have attached little tabs with rings at the side because Moving forward, I can see I'm gonna have a lot of these pixie purses, and so I want to craft a leather strap with the clips on it that I can use for all of my pixie purses. So hopefully I'll have that to share with you next week. I think I'm gonna try and find one in navy, perhaps navy or black would be good. It would be really great if I could find a couple of them and then I would have a lot of versatility. So for this week's design, we have the slip pocket in the back, which we crafted in the very first pixie purse video and then today i'm going to show you how to make the cargo pocket with the double pleats and the flap snap closure so shall we get started okay so for this week's pixie panel pocket we're going to be using patchwork styling and the way i prefer to work with patchwork design is just with random widths of material that are then cut to the appropriate length or height, which in this case is nine inches. And then I just piece those together and then true up the panel to be eight inches wide. And that's what it looks like on the back side. I did press those seams over and then cut out a like size piece of quilt batting for that. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of stitching detail down each row. For the pocket, this is going to be a cargo or pleated style pocket with the patchwork details and a flap closure. So I pieced together my panel to measure 11 inches across by eight inches tall. I cut out a solid piece of cotton for the back of that pocket. And then I took the top edge of both pieces and pressed that over. So I'm going to stagger that patchwork panel slightly down from the top of that interior lining. And this is just about a quarter inch. Then I'm going to top stitch across there twice and then go ahead and add that stitching like I did with the body panel down each row. bring back over that body panel and I'm going to center the cargo pocket on top of that body panel aligning the raw edges at the base and so center on this is four inches and lucky for me that stitch line falls right at the four inch mark so I'm going to put a pin in the center of my pocket to hold it and then working from the sides I want to bring up those raw edges to align with the edge of the body panel I'm going to pin that and then I'm going to form this little hump there and I want to from the base center that in between the center of the pocket and the edge of the pocket to create a pleat on that right hand side and I'm just going to pin the pleat down for the moment so that I can repeat that process on the other side and those pleats are about one and a quarter inches wide at the bottom and they're coming in 
one and three quarter inches from each side. Now I can go ahead and stitch across that base to secure those pleats. And if you wanted now, you can divide this pleated pocket down the center. That would be really nice for say sunglasses and keys. You could keep those items separate. I'm going to leave mine undivided. I want to craft a flap closure for that. My flap is three and a half inches tall by seven inches across and that is made with one solid cut and then one patchwork panel and a piece of batting. So I layered that the batting, the solid, the patchwork right sides facing. And now I wanna stitch across three sides of that leaving the top of that open so that I can turn it. Then I'm just going to trim within a quarter inch of that stitch line, angling those corners slightly to turn that. And I want to go ahead and turn this right side out, poke out those corners, and then press this nice and flat and I want to fold in that top raw edge a quarter inch and press that flat and I just tuck that under just a smidge to finish that top edge now I want to go ahead and top stitch down the sides and across the base of that and before I position the flap on top of the pocket, I'm going to go ahead and install two snaps there. And so the decorative portion of the snap will go on the exterior towards the corner there. And I use the poker stick to bring those prongs up. And then the female portion of the snap sits right on top of those prongs. And then I just use a small hammer. And then the male portion sits inside of there and you repeat that process for the other corner. Then you have two remaining prong sets for the underside to attach those. And we will do that after we position the flap on this panel. So you just want to center that. So I'm coming down one inch from the top of that panel and I'm centering that pocket on there and three quarters of an inch on either side so it's centered. And now I want to stitch right across the top of that flap to secure. And now I just need to attach the remaining portion of my snap, which because these sides are not attached on the pockets is going to be very easy to do. So I take the prongs and position those face down to make a mark in the fabric and then I bring the prong underneath that pocket and poke it up where the marks are. And this little stick comes in very handy for that. And then I'll position that snap right on top of those prongs and give it a couple wax with a hammer. And repeat that process for the other side. And now my snaps are secure there. Okay, and this pleated pocket panel is complete. For my rear panel, I have used the same patchwork styling, which is the slip pocket, which we made 
in the very first video and I will link to that down in the notes. The only variation with this bag is I created tabs for the sides with the one inch o-rings on those and position those tabs right above the top of that pocket and these will expand off the side and that's what I'm going to clip my strap to. The strap will have the swivel clips on that. So to finish this up I just position that second panel right sides facing and then I stitch down the sides across the base, trim up the excess, turn that right side out and fold that top edge inward, press and stitch across the top. Okay, I have this all pressed and turned. There's the back side there. I folded that top edge in and pinned it and now I just need to top stitch across there to close that up. And then the pixie panel purse is now complete. I think this one is my favorite for sure. I'm partial to the patchwork design. It truly is a one of a kind piece. So I've got this slip pocket in the back here and then go pocket with the two pleats and the flap in the front that'll offer me a lot of storage space yet still keeping this bag nice and slim. The last thing I have to do is get my removable strap and attach that. I am not going to do that in this video because I want to find one that I'm thinking is leather or vinyl that I can use for all of these pixie panel purses because we're going to be continuing this series for a few more weeks. So I thought it'd be nice if I had one strap that worked with them all and then I could just stack up my pixie panel purses when I'm not using them and choose one that matches what I'm wearing that day. So I hope you're enjoying this series. I have a few more ideas that I'd like to share and then we'll be moving on to another project. So please do hang in there. If this series does not interest you, there will be more sewing inspiration beyond the pixie pocket panel. I will be back next week to share another design. Until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. I hope you all have a beautiful week.